Hello, New Light family. I'm excited to be here with you once again as we're in our year 2022, the year of extraordinary faith. I'm excited about how far we've come uh, as we pull up we're almost halfway through this year. It's been absolutely a blessing for me. Just the things that have happened, how God has helped my faith to grow in this year. So Bishop, I thank you for your ear. I thank you for being attentive to the word and the message uh, of the Lord over us on this year. So let's get excited. Let's put another brick on this wall of faith. Um, and so we're gonna talk about this subject. We're gonna finish up the matter of faith to obey faith to obey we started a little while back and we're just going to finish that thought that we had before all right so we're going to go to the book of first kings chapter number 17 all right first Kings 17 i want to give a short review uh and that word absolutely excited me so i'm going to try not to spend too much time in the review but i will try my best to uh <laughs> to stay on track, all right? So let's go there, 1 Kings chapter number 17, verse number one, we're gonna go down to, we'll go down to verse number nine, all right? All right, so, Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. So you guys remember, we talked about last time about the word of God kind of being like a forecast, right? And we talked about the weatherman of the day, right? So Elijah represents that weatherman of the day, but we have one of this day in our Bishop McClary releasing word over us for sometimes the climate in our lives, giving us warning and telling us what's ahead. And so that's what this represents for us. No rain in the, in the land, until his word comes. All right, and the word of the Lord came unto him saying, Elijah, get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook Sherith that is before Jordan. All right, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord for he went and dwelt by the brook Sherith that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread, excuse me, and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. So we're going to stop right there. We'll pick up the last few verses later. But this is how much we got through last time. But, and I'm going to go through the process, right? We're talking about the process and we only got through a piece of that process. So we're just going to walk back the pieces and the parts of that process and it will all make sense. All right, we talked about number one. Number one was position. We talked about how important position is, right? We talked about the, the posture and the proximity, right? If, if, you are, if you're speaking to me and I'm looking around and I'm not engaged and I'm looking other places, that would be indicative that I'm not, uh, I don't have a posture that's paying attention to what you're saying, okay? Position also, right? If I'm positioning myself with my back to you, I'm communicating that I have no interest in what it is that you have to share, right? So we talked about the process starting off with our position, our posture, posture, too many P's, all right? Posture and proximity. Proximity is literally the distance, right? We talk about us being in a backslidden state, right? We get further and further away from God. How can we expect? The Bible even says, how can two walk together except they agree, right? The together is the operative word, right? I got to be close to God. There's a closeness in this walk, in this relationship with him, all right? So proximity plays a part in this too. Next, we say listening, right? The next, the next verse said, and the word of the Lord came, right? That word of the Lord came and later on we cheat, right? Because we get to see that he goes and he performs the things that God asked him to, but he had to be listening in order to perform, right? So very, very simple, but very, very important because many times when a word comes, right, it goes over our head. We don't have any level of retaining the word sometimes when it comes. Right? And so next we talked about number three was 
the instructions, right? He gives him the instructions <clears throat> to go down and he will be fed by the ravens down there at Cherith, right? So the instructions, paying attention to the instructions. Many of us, we have a hard time because when God's instructions come, we don't understand them. They don't make sense to us, right? And so if we have an issue, if it's not what we thought it's going to be, we disconnect from God. And many of us run from the call. God has been calling us to do things for years, and we spend years and decades running away from it intentionally distracted we said that intentionally distracted like Job from doing what he's called you to do here is a revelation that even though you spent time you went and got on that boat almost sunk you still had to go back and do what God originally called you to do because he won't stop pushing he won't stop coming he won't stop uh, giving you his word because there is a purpose uh, in you doing what he's called you to do so many of us get stuck right there at the instructions because we ran from what God's called us to do all right next next we said this there's a promise. We talked about that those children, right? We talked about how you have those children. Some of them, they you can just say, go clean your room. One runs, go does it, does a great job. The other, sometimes you got to bribe them. Sometimes you got to give them a token. You got to give them a trinket. You got to promise some things to them in order for them to do. And we ask the question rhetorically, what child am I? Does God have to bribe me with trinkets, toys, and all the like for me to do what he wants me to do? Or is my heart solely based on pleasing him? And whatever he wants me to do, that will I do. That's tough. But all of us have to look at ourselves in that manner and say, you know what, do I really want to please him because he's God, because he's my father. All right. Next, we said this. Now, this is where we stopped at. All right. We're going to pick up right here with new information. All right. So now, verse number now four, I love this. In four, we talked about the ravens, right? He tells him, this is the promise. The ravens are going to feed you there. Right? Verse 5 says, and so he went. In between 4 and 5, there's when the when the promise comes, when the instruction comes, I have to take this information inside and I have to make a decision. Before I do anything, before action takes place, something on the inside of me has to agree, right? In, in order for me to walk with the plan of God, I have to agree to it on the inside. That's where belief and faith where they're activated. I believe that this is going to come true and I have faith in the God who spoke it. Right? Until I get to that place on the inside, or I'll call this verse 4B, right? Before I get to action on the inside, I have to come to this place where I'm saying, you know what? I'm going to do this because I believe God. And see, this is in between, this is behind the scripture because sometimes we there's a disconnect. Right? My faith never gets activated because I, I never believe what he said. I don't believe the report. I don't believe it's going to come true. All right. And so we have to get our belief and our faith activated by trusting the God who spoke those instructions and gave that promise to us in the first place. All right. Now we're going to move on to verse number five. Verse five says, so he went. So now he's putting his faith to action. This takes us to James. Right. We read this last time. I'm going to just refresh your mind in this James chapter number two. We're going to look at. Um, I believe verse number 16. James 2 and 16 says this. Uh, we we'll, we'll skip, we'll skip down. We're going to read through all that. He said, even so, he talks about giving to people, right? Telling them, you know, go be clothed. And if you don't give them clothes, how is it going to happen? And then he says this. Even so, faith, if it has not works, it's dead, being alone. All right? And skip down to 19. Um, let's say 20. But will you know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? And here it is. All right, if I say, you know what, God, I believe you. We talked about that weather report, right? I watch the, the, I look at my phone. I say, you know what, it's going to rain today. If I believe the report, right, I'm going to go grab the umbrella. I'm going to grab my raincoat, right? I'm going to put that faith to action. All right. And so here is how our extraordinary faith begins is when I just do 
when the instruction comes, let me just go get it. Because there's going to be some things, and if we go into that, let me get ahead of myself. But there's going to be some things that happen as a result of us trusting that word. All right? Faith without works being dead. All right? And we're talking about this here. Faith to obey. Do I have faith to put this thing to action? All right? Faith is demonstrated, as he's saying here in James. Faith is demonstrated. I have to do something here to show that my faith is real. All right? Now, it's just like a quick example. It's just like if I go in, I enter you for a job. They tell me, you know what? You got the job. You can start tomorrow, right? If I believe that I got hired for the job today, right, and it starts tomorrow, shouldn't I show up? Shouldn't I show up and participate? And many of us, we say that we have faith, but when it's time to show up, sometimes we find ourselves absent. And right, and if I don't show up, I won't get paid. And here's a, here's a here's the part about it: we're expecting the provision, we're expecting payment, right, for a job that we don't show up for. Right? The faith says I'm going to show up. And then when you show up and you work and you're faithful, then you get paid. And many of us find ourselves like, why God, you didn't open this door? Why didn't this happen for me? Why didn't you bless me here? Because many of us, God is waiting for us to show up. All right. Some of us, we're waiting on God and God's looking back at us like, look, I've been waiting for you to show up for years now. All right. So let's show up. All right. Let's show up. Up now, I kind of gave a little hint to where we're going next. The next piece of the process, all right. We talked about we talked about uh, belief and our faith being activated today, all right. We talked about putting it to action. Faith being an action word, all right. Action. The next one is provision. I love this thing, all right. Provision, and many times it does not look like what we think it will look like. Here is my main man, Elijah, right? Who would have scripted that? All right, I'm going to send the ravens down there to feed you. Nothing like you thought it would be, right? You would think the man of God would go down there and there would just be some kind of this table, you know, just with food just there waiting for him. Whatever your imagination, nobody would ever thought of ravens coming and feeding him, all right? And so I love this thing. Look, this thing got me so excited all right, as I read this thing. If you study out the word cherith, all right, if you study out that word, man, look, the word back in that time in the Hebrew is the word nakal. It's the word nakal. And when you translate that, it means inheritance. Oh, my God. Inheritance. Catch this thing. So, look, I am... <laughs> I'm going to cause a famine for everybody in this place where you are, but I'm going to move you to a new place, all right, that is your inheritance. Come on, this is good. Now, catch this, catch this, catch this, catch this, especially when we talk about running from the call. Never run from your inheritance, right? That don't even make sense in the natural. If your parent, right, passes away and that parent is wealthy, that parent has liquid assets, right? When, the, when it's time for them to read the inheritance, most people, that's the first place they're going to be. I want to be in line. I'm ready for everything God, that's owed to me, right? Like like the son, like the prodigal son. Look, he even showed up so early. He said, look, I want my inheritance while you're alive, right? <laughs> so, look, you don't run from your inheritance, right? And so many of us, we find ourselves, the instructions come to a place that's foreign to us, right? But God is saying, look, this place is going to be uncomfortable. It's not going to be what you think it is, but this is your inheritance. Look, go there. If, look, go down there. You're going to be provided for. You're going to be protected. And you're going to receive your inheritance there. My God, that is exciting to me. All right. But here, catch this thing about your inheritance. Ah, look, inheritance has only got your name on it. All right, your inheritance only has your name on it. In other words, there's nobody else going to be walking around with that. There's nobody else. Come on, because we, we get in a place we're trying to follow other people. We want to copy what this person did. and I want to do what they did. Look, there is a new thing. There is a unique thing. There is an inheritance just for you that doesn't look like what anybody else on the planet has ever done. 
All right, and so that place is going to be scary because it's a one on one. All right, it's a one on one. It's unique. It's never been done before. All right, he'll give you freshness and newness of all the millions and billions of people of the planet. He will give you something new, something that's never been done before. That is absolutely exciting. That thing got me excited because many of us were running. We're running. Well, look, I don't know if I can do this thing. Look, I, calling me to sing, calling me to preach, calling me to write a book, whatever it is, you know what that thing is. You know what that place he's calling you to. He has provision already set there for you. He had, and here's the faith, right? He already has provision. Look, my main man, Peter, he said, look, bid me to walk on the water. Look, I've already set it so that you can walk on the water. I've already, I've already made a way for you. All right. If I want to have you walk on dry land in the middle of the sea, look, I am going to move the waters back just for you. Something unique, something that was never done before. Look, so you have to run to that place that you've been accustomed to running from. Because guess what? Just like my main man, you still got. To, I'm sorry. I said Job earlier, I meant to say Jonah. Just like Jonah, you still have to come back and perform that thing. All right? Ah, oh, that thing is so good. All right? When your heavenly father leaves provision for you and over your life, he will send ravens. He will send whatever it is to make sure that you have been provided for. To make sure you have what you need to get through. All right, he will make sure. He will open up the doors. He will, look, catch this thing. Look, this thing is amazing. Because ravens, ravens are a cunning bird. They're actually one of the smartest birds that we know of. All right, another thing about ravens, ravens are very opportunistic feeders. All right, very opportunistic. They're loners. They don't, you don't see a pack of ravens just flying around. Catch this thing, that he's going to use a lonely, selfish, opportunistic, right, bird to take care of the man of God. All right, so in the same instance for you, God's going to use people that hate you, people that will despise you, people that will take your blessing, that will normally take what is yours for themselves, right? A backbiter, he'll take people that are do you dirty in the street, he'll take your enemy, like, like the Bible says, in the presence of my enemies, right? He will cause those people to set that table for you. Look, and that's the blessing about that, that verse, right? Like that table can be prepared, but another part of it, God can cause that enemy to set the table for you. My God, that thing is good. He calls a raven, a loner, someone who's not used to sharing, one who's not used to taking care of anybody else. He will use a raven to provide for you. That is good. That is absolutely good. My God, that thing blessed me. By any means or any persons necessary, God will provide. Now, I love this thing that we're going to do. We talked about provision, right? We're going to have like a B, right? If, if 7A is provision, 7B will be protection. We're going to call them twins, okay? We're going to call provision and protection twins, like people call grace and mercy twins. Provision and protection are twins. I'm going to give you evidence. I'm going to give you proof, all right? Catch this thing. All right, catch this. You cannot have provision without having protection. What do I mean? All right, let me give you some examples to show it being true. All right, if I provide my child with shoes, I've protected them from being barefoot. It's a package. If I provide my child with toys, I I am protecting them from boredom. If I am purchasing a house, it's protecting me from the elements. It's protecting me from weather, right? It, like in the case of my main man, Elijah here, if he is provided food, it is protecting him from being hungry, all right? So they are not their twins. So when God provides, he protects also. You don't have to pray for both of them. They are a package deal. Isn't God good, all right? 
Absolutely good. All right. God wants to provide for you through faith. All right. We must do our part. We got to trust this process. We got to walk out this process and have faith to obey when the instructions come. All right. Now, catch this thing. I love this. Now, our final point, we listed all of them, all right? We're going to go back through them really, really quickly, all right? Just to have them all right here in one package, all right? First one's position with posture and proximity. I'm not going to do all them P's together again. <laughs> all right, next was listening, right? Next was the instructions, all right? Next part of the process was the promise. The next one that we talked about was belief and faith activated. Next, we talked about action. Then we talked about provision. 7A was provision, 7B, protection. And the last one, the last one is very simple, is repeat. All right, repeat. Now, catch this thing. All right, verse number eight. Now, seven, verse seven, it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land as a part of that the uh, famine that he spoke right there'll be no rain in the land and the word of the lord came unto him saying arise get thee to zarephath which belongs to zidon and dwell there behold i have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee all right this thing is good this thing is absolutely good now what happens when you obey, right? God opens up the door. He provides for you, right? And then it's over. It dries up, right? Many of us, as I spoke recently about sometimes we'll start calling our blessing a curse, right? Because we're, <laughs> we have become dependent on the blessing instead of the blessor. That's when you call your blessing a curse is when you put, when you depend on the blessing more than the blessor. Because guess what? As we saw here, he said, look, I already have provision for you and protection for you in the next step here. But some of us get stuck behind the today's miracle, right? Or yeah, we're at this point, yesterday's miracle, right? He was there long enough for the whole brook to dry up, right? So he stayed there, it ran its course, right? It's doing what nature does, right? God blesses you with today $10,000, that might not last you to the end of your life, right? But we don't call that blessing a curse, right? We, but the, in, in, yeah, y'all gonna make me get ahead of myself. I see what y'all trying to do, all right? So now, that, that blessing, do not call that blessing a curse. But we have to understand that that place was temporary. All right? That place was temporary. You can't live here. You can't live here in this place. And so God, from here, he put you here. So all right, trust me here, but we have another destination. This is what we call a faith walk, right? It's not a faith walk and stop and camp out, right? It's a walk. We're going to continue to move with him. All right. And so many times what happens when we depend on the blessing more than the blessor, we do just like Lot's wife. Right. What did she do? Right. She was the, she loved that life than Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. When God was having them to move to another place. Right. Now catch this. At first, in the beginning, when Lot and Abram, when they were together, when they said, look, you take the east, I take the west, whatever, and he chose that place, when he looked over there, that had the advantage over the place where Abram went, right? So he went there because he perceived it as being a blessing, a place that was going to take care of them, but look how it changed, right? It changed from that to this, the most evil city that we know of. To just like that brook drying up, right? It changed, right? And it's time for a new move. It's time for a new place, right? But what did his wife do? She looked back. She was dependent on the blessing instead of the God that provided it, right? When you're dependent on the God that provided it, it doesn't matter where you go next. He is the one that is protecting and providing for you. Isn't that good? All right. 
All right, and so 2 Samuel 5, I'm not going to read it, but I want to just, please go there in, 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 in your spare time. All right, David had just got anointed king, all right, over all of Israel, right? And so his first battle, as soon as the Philistines heard about him being anointed, they came up, right? They come up on the plain, and they show themselves in battle array, and David, he inquires of the Lord, he said, God, what do you want me to do? And God says, go, attack, right? He goes, he attacks, slaughters the people, comes back home. And after this later, they come back on the plane. They do the same thing. And he inquires of God again. And God says, do not go. Now, here is where many of us get stuck, right? The first time when God says, go, we go, we have victory, and we live in the same instructions from yesterday, right? We live in that same instruction. But then... The second time, still go to God, right? And when I say repeat, when I say repeat, don't repeat the action. What am I asking you to repeat? Repeat obeying God. Repeat following the Lord, following the Holy Spirit. Because if you do the same action, you're going to find yourself in the wrong season. God wants to do a new thing. He loves doing brand new things. You didn't see him going back and replicating things. You would see him doing brand new things. So when I say repeat, don't go back to the brook because the brook dried up. If we were talking to Elijah, all right? Look, he has a woman that's going to sustain you in the next place. But that's only when you follow him. All right? And we have to follow him because he has some wonderful things for us in the new place. Follow him. Repeat all the principles that involve us listening and following God. Be blessed, New Light. I pray that this word strengthen you. I pray that it encourage you in this walk, that this your extraordinary faith will grow in this year like never before. Let us pray. Father, we bless you. We love you. We thank you for this word. Thank you for that there's a process, God, that you're walking us through in your word, God, to build, to grow, and to develop an extraordinary faith on the inside of us, God. We thank you, God, that you're doing it even now, God, through the hearing and the obeying and the following of your word. Father, we bless you for this word, God. May we keep it close in our hearts, Father. God, that we will not sin against you. God, we give you glory, honor, and praise. Let not the enemy take this word from us, God. Let us clutch and hold on to and grab this word and hold it as valuable and precious. Father, we love you. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Goodbye, New Life family. We'll see you next time.